Okay, so hello, uh, I'm Ben. I'm a PhD student from uh, Ben Gurion University. Uh, I'm here to present uh, Drone's Crypto Analysis, a joint work made with the help of Raz Benetanel, Professor Adi Shamir, and Professor Yuval Alovich, my PhD advisor. So, let's start, and I want you to have a look on this picture. Now, can you please tell me what is the drone that is being boxed in yellow is being used for? Is it being used for conducting a privacy invasion attack? Or is it being used for a legitimate purpose? In this case, it's taking a selfie. Is it B or C? So the answer is actually D. It depends. And this is a real problem nowadays, because um, many operators now use drones to spy after their spouses, after their neighbors, after celebrities, and even after random people. And this challenge is even expected uh, to get worse in the near future because many uh, businesses around the world now adopt drones for various purposes. Deliveries is only one of them. Uh, moreover, legislation and regulations are being changed in order to support what we call an open skies policy, uh, allowing drones to fly in populated areas. Okay, so we went to the literature in order to check what, is, what was suggested uh, in order to uh, detect a privacy invasion attack. And we actually found that there are various geofencing methods that were suggested over the past few years, such as radars and cameras and even some hybrid methods. And these methods um, are able to detect the presence of a nearby drone. However, let me ask you the following question. Is detecting the presence of a nearby drone actually effective at detecting a privacy invasion attack? And the answer is no, because as I said earlier, the presence is no longer restricted in populated areas. Also, even if you manage to detect a drone, does it necessarily mean that the drone is being used to spy after the organization, as you can see in here? Um, These two pictures actually were taken from the same location of the drone. That is being located, that is being boxed in yellow. So the drone's location doesn't necessarily imply that the drone is being used to spy after the victim, or after a point of interest. Um, it's actually the camera orientation that determines whether it is being used uh, for a legitimate purpose or not. So we actually concluded that geofencing methods are irrelevant for detecting uh, a privacy invasion attack in an open skies era. Okay, so our main objective is actually detecting a privacy uh, invasion attack, and let's go through the uh, uh, detection scheme. We actually assume that there is a malicious, malicious drone operator that operates a Wi-Fi FPV drone, um, and he used the drone to spy after a victim that can be located up to five kilometers from uh, the malicious drone operator. Now, we assume that we managed to, uh, uh, using a radio receiver to uh, intercept the packets that are being sent from the drone back to uh, its malicious uh, uh, operator. And we also assume that the victim uh, is using some kind of a gadget. We will name it watermarker, and I will explain what, what the watermarker is actually being used for in two or three uh, slides from now. So for now, Let's talk about Wi-Fi uh, first-person uh, view channel. And Wi-Fi FPV channel actually intended to uh, provide two things. One is to stream the video stream for, uh, from the drone to uh, its uh, operator. And the second one is actually to allow the operator to maneuver the drone while it's, uh, it's in air. Um, in this uh, study, we actually focus on the downlink, which is the video stream. And when you are using Wi-Fi for uh, a Wi-Fi for a first-person view channel, you actually get the encryption only just by using the uh, Wi-Fi standards. Uh, so you get the encryption for free. So it means that the video stream is encrypted. However, does encryption ensure confidentiality? So again, the answer is no. I wasn't here if the answer was yes. And 
Let us talk about how first we intercept uh, 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 an FPV stream, uh, more specifically how we can intercept a, a Wi-Fi network. <clears throat> so we actually apply the three stages. Um, we sniff Wi-Fi packets sent from uh, of a specific uh, network. Uh, you can do it using uh, applications such as Ermon. We're extracting the time series signal from the unencrypted metadata in the second layer. Now, indeed, the, the payload is encrypted. However, the metadata uh, that we are using is not encrypted, which is the, uh, um, the size of the packet. Now, we use it in order to extract the time series, and we down sample the, the uh, time series by aggregating uh, the time series in a, in a fixed window. It actually makes things more, more faster. <clears throat> so, let us now talk how you can classify uh, a Wi-Fi network as FPV channel. So, um, the key observation in here is to understand that the drone is basically a flying camera. Now, by combining these two the, this, uh, algorithms for moving device detection with algorithms to camera detection, you can actually classify a Wi-Fi network as FPV channel. So, and the way that we do it is actually we... Uh, manage to find um, that if you take the intercepted bitrate signal and analyze it in the frequency domain, the most strongest magnitude actually corresponds to the uh, FPS rate. So as you can see in here, this was actually taken from uh, one of the drones that we used, and this will help you actually to detect not only drones, but also cameras. So, how you can uh, exclude the cameras from uh, the, the, the drones. Here you're using uh, algorithms for moving object detection. This can easily be done by analyzing the received signal strength indication that is also uh, um, present in the, in the Wi-Fi packet. And combining these two observations to a single algorithm, you'll be able to detect a drone within three seconds with high accuracy and very uh, low uh, false positive rate. Okay, so after you manage to detect the frame per second rate, you actually get something else for free, which is the resolution that is being video streamed, uh, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is being used for the video stream. And this is actually being done only by uh, dividing the, uh, the bits per second with the frame per second. You get the resolution. There are many calculators online that can actually solve it to you. Um, Okay, so now let's move to the more interesting part on how to detect actually uh, whether the FPV stream that you classified is being used to video stream uh, the victim, to spy on a victim. And in order to do so, I want you to have a look on the third stage of the downlink, which is the video encoding, the video compression. Now, this stage actually uh, follows the H.264 standards. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with H.264 compression standards, um, basically I will summarize it in this way. Instead of sending an the, the, the entire frame, a frame is actually described as delta frames, as delta changes from another frame. And, and this information is being sent in this structure, a group of picture structure, GOP structure. So the result of using uh, this uh, video compression algorithm is basically if there are two consecutive frames with uh, high similarity, it means that a lower amount of data needs to be encoded and sent to the drone. However, if there is a big similarity between two consecutive uh, uh, frames, actually a bigger amount of data needs to be encoded and sent back to the, to the drone's operator from the drone. And having that in mind, we actually place the drone, as you can see in here, in front of an LED board. This is, uh, the LED board was uh, connected to an Arduino, and we actually use the LED board uh, as flicker. Um, we actually uh, turn it to a three hertz flicker, as you can see in here, and intercepted the traffic that was sent from the drone to the controller. Now, um, as you can see, this is the intercepted bitrate signal over time, and it uh, actually uh, contains six beautiful bursts every time that the flicker changed from on to off and vice versa. So you can, we actually uh, 
concluded that the three hertz flickering LED uh, actually watermarks the six, uh, created the six hertz phenomena in the intercepted bitrate signal. So understanding this, we actually managed to watermark each and every frequency of the intercepted bitrate signal. And by doing so, you can analyze the influence of uh, uh, how the magnitude was changed as a result of uh, initiating a flicker in a given time. And by doing so, you can uh, decide whether, uh, you can determine whether a drone is being directed to a flicker. Now, if the flicker is actually located nearby the victim, it means that you can imply that uh, the drone is actually being used to spy after the victim. Okay, so for now, you understand how to uh, classify a suspicious radio transmission as FPV channel and how to uh, detect whether the FPV channel is actually being used to uh, spy after the victim. Um, however, with a big sorrow, great sorrow, I, can't, I won't be able to explain you how to locate the drone uh, in space by analyzing the uh, intercepted bitrate signal. I didn't manage to squeeze it into a 16 minute talk, so the details are on the paper. You are invited to read it. You are invited to ask me in the, in the question episode afterwards. Okay, so we have a flicker, and we want to hide it from the, the drone's operator in order uh, to not raise his suspicion that something is happening. And we actually analyzed several uh, ways uh, in order to achieve it. Uh, however, the way that we uh, find uh, as most effective was uh, flickering between two similar use. Instead of just uh, uh, turning it on and off, flickering between two similar use, the, their only difference is actually in the brightness component. And this actually satisfies the following uh, requirements. It actually uh, exploits the inability of the human eye to distinguish between two similar hues. Um, it's also, so it means undetectable uh, by uh, direct observation. It means that if the operator will look at the flicker, he won't be able to detect it. it uh, also, it's undetectable uh, by indirect observation. It means that even if you will look on it uh, via the controller, you won't be able to detect it. And as you can see in here, it does watermarks the intercepted FPV channel. Okay. So, I want to show you, uh, we wanted to test uh, our uh, method in real scenarios, and in order to do it, we actually uh, applied it to uh, a victim that is on the move, actually uh, driving in a car, and a static victim that is actually uh, located in its living room. And let me show you the demos. Here you can see a siren that is actually flickering in uh, a specific frequency. I think it's 3.9 hertz. And the victim is inside the car. And here we used a smart film as a flicker. As you can see, the flickering window, it is installed all, uh, on the window. It, uh, we use it as a flicker. Now, for each of these scenarios, we uh, also recorded a legitimate use of the drone, uh, and we did it by uh, um, uh, locating the drone 180 degrees uh, from, the, from the house and from the car. We call it a legitimate use. Now, we wanted to evaluate our uh, method on, uh, on uh, the intercepted bitrate signal in each of the cases. And we fixed the true positive rate to 1.0. It means that uh, all the privacy invasion attacks should be detected. And as you can see in here, in about two and a half seconds, we were able to detect a privacy invasion attack uh, with very low false positive rate. Um, this is how the spectrograms uh, looked like when uh, the flicker was on. Okay, so I'm, in, um, I'm about to, uh, I'm about to uh, get to the end, so some additional information that can be found uh, in the paper. You will be able to find uh, the exact details on how to, locate, uh, how to locate the spying drone in space just by analyzing the intercepted uh, bitrate signal 
uh, and we do it with only a, a single uh, Wi-Fi receiver. Um, you will be able to uh, read about the countermeasure methods, uh, about the analysis of the impact of ambient factors, uh, which are wind and ambient light. Um, other methods that we consider for hiding the flicker and the exact details of the experiments that I uh, described in uh, this talk. Um, the preliminary version of this paper, which uh, actually presents a method on how to detect a privacy invasion attack using time domain analysis instead of frequency analysis, as I described in here, is on the archive. Um, we named it back then, a year and a half ago, Game of Drones in order to get some good PR. However, considering the latest course of events, I might have to change the name of Game of Drones in order to maintain some good PR. Okay, so I want you to, uh, on behalf of uh, Cyber at BGU, I'd like to thank you all for attending this talk. You can find us uh, just by looking Cyber at BGU. This is my Twitter account. You can find more of our works in there. And this is the paper website. And I think that this is about the time to take questions. Thank you. So again, we have time for a few questions. Uh, can you please go to the mic? Hi, I'm Chris from UCSB. A um, couple of questions. You said the flicker would not be visible, but it showed in the videos. Uh, what's up? No, uh, well, in the videos we didn't uh, we didn't intend to uh, to hide it. But okay. there is a video in the picture, and it shows how you can hide uh, the. We actually flicker uh, with a smart bulb between uh, two similar use and. It's not detected to the human eye, so you can find it. By the way, there are photos in the paper that show you the, how the use are similar, and you won't be able to, uh, to understand that, there are, that there's a difference between them. Okay, cool. And the second one is when you said the experiments on the false positives, the drone was facing like exactly away from, from yeah, the- Yeah, 180 the, degrees yeah. For, for the so, other side. So what about the scenario that you described where you actually were spying on the room and the drone was like the legitimate use was it was looking down, right? No. So maybe it had some reflection from walls that it would pick up? What ah, regarding the reflection. So uh, basically when you are looking at the room, uh, uh, we use the smart film. This is not even a flicker which uh, uh, creates light. So there is no, uh, in this case, there, there is no uh, a chance to, to, uh, to get reflections from uh, a smart film. However, in all of our experiments using an LED, we did not get any you know, false positive as a result of uh, the, uh, uh, the reflections that were somehow uh... Yes? Uh, yeah, it is interesting work. So I was wondering uh, on the robustness of the, of the approach, and in particular, why did you change from timing-based to frequency-based analysis. And I was wondering if it was based on, the, on the, like the false positives that you might be able to get, because at least in timing analysis, I would, I would expect that unless the scene is very still, uh, like if the drone has, is like looking at a, a street that has a lot of people moving across, then the, the timing analysis is probably going to be very similar to the flicker analysis, no? In the, so because it's the, yeah. Basically, you ask and, and give the proper answer. Sure. Uh, when you are using uh, time domain analysis, there is a larger kind of false positive rate as a result of some other things that happening uh, during uh, uh, the time that you are trying to uh, uh, apply the, the flickering. So, when you are using uh, frequency domain analysis, things are getting more neater and cleaner because you can exactly look for the frequency that you want in order to understand whether uh, um, privacy invasion attack is actually conducted. So it makes things more, more clearer. And as you can see, in the, as I showed you in the experiment of the car, um, the experiment of the car, I don't believe that can be uh, detected using time domain analysis. There is too much noise if right. you are trying okay. to. Yeah, that was uh, my point. Yeah, OK. So. There has also been some work on trying to uh, sort of like use visual challenges to identify, or sort of example, if the, if the camera is looking at the right place. Uh, but it was, uh, it was a different kind of scenario. It was uh, on authenticating the mm -hmm. image, like sort of like verifying that I'm indeed looking at the, 
at one area and, not, and it's not sort of like the typical Hollywood attack where the attacker is just replaying the old video from yesterday and it's not there. So it might be worth to take a look. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank Ben again. Thank you very much.